regular uh, Tuesday night guest. I love talking to this guy. I love watching him play. And, uh, you know, he's had a, a solid year. Solid year. I don't know what he expects. I mean, he's a, he's a humble guy. He was an all-conference uh, guy, preseason All-American, leading the team in tackles, doing another uh, solid job for an Aztec team that, uh, quite frankly, I think uh, is, is still growing as a football team. And that is um, all everything linebacker Miles Burris joins us. And, Miles, welcome to the show tonight, my friend. Congratulations on a hard-fought victory in Fort Collins. Oh, thanks, Coach. Thanks for having me. Oh, great to have you. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, the, the trip to uh, Fort Collins. You guys get in there. You go in there on uh, Saturday. And those guys, for their record, uh, they gave you all you could handle, didn't they? Yeah, they're definitely a lot better than the record shows. And uh, they went out there and proved that, and they fought hard. And, uh, you know, all, all the credit in the world to them because they're, they're a great team. Hey, now, Miles, uh, they had uh, Pete Thomas, a kid that's a sophomore, and you guys uh, played uh, against last year, a kid out of Valhalla who's uh, – I got hurt during the game, and they brought their backup quarterback in. And, you know, it's amazing. Whether you watch a college game and, or a pro game, a lot of times when they go to that different quarterback, it can really kind of get the other, you know, get that team kind of fired up. And the other team that's having to face that quarterback maybe isn't all that well prepared for it. And it could cause some problems. And what were you guys doing on the sidelines when they made the change? Did you know much about the guy they brought in? Uh, no, not really, and we we didn't really uh, we didn't change anything up once the once the new guy came in. We just you know stuck with our scheme and and uh, kept playing the same defense. Um, yeah. You know, uh, your kicker Abel Perez uh, whacked that field goal to give you guys the eighteen to fifteen lead, and you guys were able to to get out of there with the W. And Abel's had let, let's face it, he's had a rough year, and I would imagine sometimes being the kicker can be the loneliest guy in the world. And we're getting a little feedback there. Let's see. I think uh, we'll uh, we'll try to reconnect. I think we're getting a little feedback there from uh, Miles, and we'll try to reconnect on that uh, phone line here momentarily. And I want to I want to talk to him a little bit about Abel Perez because he's had a rough year, but boy, he went out there in, in really difficult conditions the other day and kicked that field goal, which proved to be the game winner. And uh, we'll get right back to Miles. And remember, next segment we're going to get back to uh, more phone calls as well. Let's reconnect with Miles. And and Miles, I was mentioning how it can be a really lonely job being the field goal kicker, but Abel Perez went out there and whacked that thing and gave you guys the opportunity to win that football game. And he's been through a lot this year. Yeah, he has, and um, you know it's 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 been a rough year for him. But you know he uh, he came through on that field goal that put us in the lead and. You know, defense was able to do just enough to keep that lead, and, and uh, we were able to win the game. So, we're you know, we're proud of them for that. and um, You know, just proud of them for, for sticking in there and still working hard no matter what the circumstance is and uh, trying to be, you know, mentally tough and, and not let it affect them too much. Hey, tell me a little bit, uh, and both coaches have are, are been very successful at the collegiate level, Coach Hoke and, and Coach uh, Long. How do they differ, like, when they talk with you guys, like, either prior to the game or at halftime, uh, are they completely opposite of how they talk with you guys before you come back out on the field or maybe come out of the locker room to start the ball game? Uh, no, not really. I mean, they're not, they're definitely not opposite. They have their differences, but, you know, at the same time, they're, they're both uh, pretty authoritative figures and, and guys that can uh, get you fired up to play and, and that you want to rally behind and, and play for. Miles Burris, our guest here on Southern Cal or San Diego Sports Leader Double X Ten Ninety of the Aztecs. Uh, coach Long is the head coach, but also the defensive coordinator. How much leeway does he give a guy like Miles Burris, a guy that's been there, done that, and had great success at the college level? I mean, not too much. He tre- he's, he's a pretty fair coach in the sense that he treats everybody the same. And you know, if you're if you're doing well, he'll he'll let you know. And if you're not, then he'll really let you know. And yeah, you know, whenever I mess up, he still gets on me and uh and rightfully so and um you know I, I appreciate that about him that he's uh you know he doesn't he doesn't really play favorites it's just uh, whoever's whoever's playing well you know he appreciates <laughs> hey you guys are bowl eligible now and uh what was it like in the aztec uh locker room after that game i mean you guys win a hard-fought game you become bowl eligible uh, how excited were you guys we were happy we were, we were very happy it just any win is a great win and uh, you know it's something that coach long always tells us and you know 
we were definitely the, the favorites in that game and uh, barely pulled it off. But um, you know, either way, no matter what, if it's a point or if it's if it's thirty or forty, we're we're just as happy because we got another win under our belts. And um, uh, yeah, we're both eligible, but we know that uh, we still have to we still have to try to win out the rest of our games. And because going to a bowl game is not guaranteed, if you, just because you're both eligible. And uh, there's teams every year that win six games and don't get to go, so. We're just trying to, you know, finish hard and prepare the best we can every week for each opponent. You know, I was seeing today uh, in the paper they were talking about uh, Reno. They're playing uh, Louisiana Tech, I think, this weekend, and they they were saying if if they won that game, they may get a uh, an invite right after the the ball game for the Poinsettia Bowl. Now, do you go online or your teammates, you guys go online and kind of look around to see what the bowl projections are, just to kind of have some fun with that. Personally, I don't, uh, you know, just with football and everything in itself, I've got limited time and, and restrictions on what, what I can do and everything. But uh, I'm sure there are guys on our team that kind of do look into that a little bit. For me, it's just um, I'm not too worried about it. I just kind of focus on the task at hand, and right now that's Boise, <laughs> and um, just uh, trying, to, trying to do my best at that. That's all I can really worry about. And you know, uh, Miles, I was saying this earlier, and I, and I really believe it. I mean, there's some inexperience on this football team, and I know you you lost uh, Telly, the, the big defensive lineman, and Walter Casey, and you know you got uh, receivers that are you know still uh, learning to get better at the uh, college level. Just you know, the only way you get better is by playing. And I think this has been a really an outstanding year. You guys have played a very dynamic schedule. But I also said earlier in the show, and I believe this, I don't think you guys have played your best football yet. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're kind of hoping for the same. We we don't feel like we've ever put a, a complete game together yet where we can we really play to our potential. And uh, there is a lot of potential on this team, like you're saying. And we got a whole bunch of guys that are that are uh, they're young, but they're very talented, and they just need some more experience and. Uh, you know, a lot of those guys are getting that experience and uh, getting better throughout the season. Now, you guys uh, got yesterday off your back at it today. What kind of practice you have today? No more Tuesday practice. You know, Tuesday, bruise day. It's, uh, <laughs> it's always kind of the kind of the heavier practice of the week. But uh, you know, we we were out there sharpening each other and getting better. And then, uh, kind of take us through the rest of the week. What goes on tomorrow, Thursday, and of course, you got the walkthrough on Friday. But give us kind of a Wednesday and, and Thursday workout. Uh, both practices they start at the same time you know usually around four um they'll be you know a little bit lighter each day but uh tomorrow tomorrow we'll do most of the same things go over different special teams though than we did today and uh just try to get some work in on Boise in particular and and, uh, the different looks they're going to get through our scout teams and um and then Thursday is, is some of the same, but we, we focus a lot uh, a lot of, on our special teams, so we'll go through all of our special teams on Thursday instead of just uh, picking a couple. And I'm sure you're trying to figure out a way to get a couple of wraps on Kellen Moore on Saturday night. Uh, this guy's uh, an awful good quarterback, and it seemed like that offensive line does a heck of a job of keeping his uniform clean. Yeah, he's a, he's a hell of a player, and he um, you know he's one of those one of those guys that obviously knows the system really well been a four-year starter and and uh he's a great player he's got a great arm he's savvy and um you know scrappy and he makes he makes everybody around him better and um yeah, yeah like you said the offensive line is great too they got a bunch of big guys up there and they do a good job at protecting them so it's definitely going to be a big challenge and it'll be fun and we're looking forward to it hey what did you think uh before and i yeah i mean you played against these teams the last uh a few years uh, especially you know tcu and this will be your first uh, go round against boise state but I mean, going into that game, when you you look at it, did you figure TCU, because you've played them and they're physical, they're quick, did you think they had a good shot to win up there in Boise? Yeah, I mean, I did, well, I did. I definitely did. They're they're a great team, and they always have been. I've never, and at the same time, I've never played Boise, and um, until this week, I haven't really watched any any film on them either. So um, they're obviously both great teams, and, and uh uh, it was a hard-fought battle, and TCU barely came up on top. And uh, you know, props to them; they, they fought hard. Watch that film today. Hey, Miles Burris of San Diego State joining us on San Diego Sports Leader Double X Ten Ninety. A couple of other uh, quick questions. You're you're a modest guy, and I and you're a team guy, and I I respect that a great deal, and I respect the way you play. But I, I want to talk about a, a personal uh, note here, uh, as far as uh, 
postseason. Once the season's over, you guys go to a bowl game and hopefully win that bowl game. Uh, are you being invited right now to like any of the postseason uh, bowl games, the Shrine game, any of those? Um, you know, not. I don't think that I've been invited to any yet. But um, you know, if the opportunity presents itself, I'd love to go play in any one of them. And I'm sure you do a good job. Hey, you know, I was uh, reading up on you a little bit the other night, and your dad played up at Oregon State. Uh, and when you get decided to play football, uh, what kind of dad was he? Was he a, a guy that just said, hey, I'll sign you up and go out there and play, or did he get pretty involved and, and really teach you a lot about the game? A little bit of both. He, he was um, he, he's a dad that was, it was great because he never pushed me to play any sports. He never told me I had to do anything. I just kind of did what I wanted to, and – uh, when I started playing football, I, there was a park down the street from me where they practice, and I saw him practicing. And I, you know, I said, "Hey, I want to, I want to go join the team." And he was, he was all for it, and he was excited for it because he was a, he was a great football player growing up. And um, so I played, and um, the next next few years throughout junior uh, junior Grizzlies, it was uh, Pop Warner time. Well, he was a coach for I think maybe three or three or four years when I was. Um, yeah. And that was a lot of fun to be able to have my dad helping me out there and coaching me up. And um, he was—he was definitely wasn't—he wasn't like some of those dads that you see that are way too intense and way too aggressive and in, in their kids' face saying they have to do this, that, or the other. You know, he was always just very supportive, and he'd give me a lot of tips and teach me how to play the game at a high level. And um, you know, he was—he was a very loving father, and I appreciate that. Wow, that's great stuff. Uh, sounds very similar to the, my upbringing. I just wanted to sign me up, go out there and have fun, and uh, try to teach me as much as he knew from playing. Hey, uh, Miles, as always, great pleasure. Best of luck on Saturday night, and hopefully you guys walk off the gridiron with a W. That would be a fantastic and definitely bring a lot of national exposure to the Aztec football program. Yes, sir. Take care, Miles. We'll check in with you next Tuesday night. Sounds good. Thanks for having me.